I have a confession to make. I, must I am obsessed with backing vocals and I sometimes focus more on them than on the rest of the song that I'm listening to. I've always been like that and ever since I was a kid I would harmonize with whatever was playing on the radio and whatever I was hearing in my surroundings. I'd harmonize <laughs> everything. Little nerd. I've been to concerts where I've been more impressed or more obsessed with the backing vocalists than the main artist. And I've had friends laugh at me when I try to show them some backing vocal segment that I really love because I just get so into it. This is such a passion of mine, so I want to get you hyped on backing vocals. I think they deserve more attention, so we'll go through what they are different uses of backing vocals and different roles that they can play within a composition and along the way I'll show you some of my favorite backing vocals as examples to what we're talking about. So I just want to touch briefly on what backing vocals are just to avoid any confusion throughout the video. The term backing denotes that the singer is in the background and that counts whether it's a live performance or in a studio. It doesn't mean that the singer is like physically in the background, it just means that sonically like they're put further away in the mix, if that makes sense. Back in the day they used to do like they had the main artist and then they had actual backing vocal artists that did the backing vocals because they normally had to record like big sections at once so they were in the same room. These days we have unlimited tracks, well almost, I know Ariana Grande and Pharrell managed to max out Pro Tools on, I think it was R.E.M. Or no, it was Get Well Soon. These days it's normal that the artists do their own backing vocals in studio and they also take those stems and they use it in the live performances, at least if the live performances are like the studio versions or like similar. For instance, Ariana Grande does her own backing vocals. And they usually use those stems at her concerts where she plays her uh, big hits like, like they're on the albums, you know? But for special occasions, like for instance, the BBC Live Lounge, where they change up the songs a bit, she uses live backing vocalists. So take a look at this. There are different uses for backing vocals and different roles that they play within a composition. The backing vocals of a song can consist of anything from repeating a word, repeating a passage or a chorus, to like harmonically supporting uh, full melody lines. Let's take a look at some of these roles or ways to use backing vocals. First, backing vocals can be used in a production to fatten up the main vocal. I must and what we usually do here is called doubling, which means that the backing vocals sing in unison or octaved, up or down, an octave from the main vocal. And then you have whisper tracks and stuff like that that also helps fatten up a vocal. But even though this most definitely counts as backing vocals, when most people think of backing vocals, they think about harmonies. With harmonies, the standard is to use the root, the third, and the fifth of a chord, or you can add a seven or a sustain two or four, depending on the chords of the song and your preferences, you know? You can have just two voices harmonize, I don't this. or with more of a full choir setup where you cover the whole chord. Or even more than the chord, you can go beyond, you know? These are just basic harmonies, and often these types of harmonies follow the words and general direction of the melody, just to fill out and support the main vocal. You can also do a more free type of backing vocals, where they don't follow the lyrics or the melody, like to a T. but rather they play around with it and they create complementary lines to whatever the melody is doing or whatever the singer or band is doing. I think that R&B artists and hip-hop artists are brilliant at this. Oh, 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 
pay attention to all the small vocal details that fill out here, not only harmonically, but also rhythmically. Then you have the call and response type backing vocals. They are there to respond sort of to the main vocal, either by repeating or sort of answering the lyrics in the main vocal. And this kind of fills out space between lines. It's kind of like when a blues guitar in a blues song plays licks between whatever the singer is doing. You know, it's kind of the same thing, but here you do it with lyrics. So you get more options when you write lyrics, which is really cool. This is a very commonly used backing vocal style. And one of the reasons that I love it is because it opens up to more creative lyric writing or creative songwriting where you can sort of tell a story more creatively because you can have the main vocal tell the main story, but then you can have sort of other people's response to it or like an inner voice that responds to it or like yeah just opens up for more creativity in your lyric writing another thing i love about call and response type backing vocals is that it helps you create space and variation in a composition both lyrically sonically uh, and rhythmically And I have to mention counterpoint. Even though this classical harmonizing style doesn't really blatantly at least show up in commercial type genres, at least not today, not that much, you know, not in backing vocals at least. You can have it in the beats and everything, but it doesn't really show up in backing vocals like in modern productions or modern pop productions. Because if you listen to classical music or jazz, even though it's modern productions, they often use counterpoint, so you'll recognize it. I won't dive too deep into counterpoint here, but I just want to quickly explain what it is. And it's when you use two or more independent melodies together, but they function harmonically together. So the melodies are harmonically interdependent, but the rhythmical side and the, the melodic contour is independent from each other. If that makes sense, I hope it makes sense. Okay, so let me give you an example. Uh, if you sing Three Blind Mice and Father Jacob on top of each other, that's counterpoint. They are interdependent harmonically, but the rhythm and the general direction of the melody aren't like the same. And to use a more relevant example, it's, you can count it, I don't know, you can sort of count it as counterpoint when uh, you hear mashup of pop songs that they fit well together but they're not the same song, they just have the same harmonic backdrop. It's getting late. Anyway, yeah, I don't know how juicy this is to you, but to me, it's my nectar, it gives me life. So I hope you enjoyed it too. Thank you so much for watching. Like if you liked the video, subscribe if you want to subscribe, and thank you so much. Bye! Now